that I started speaking to people in New York and they think you're trying to pick them up. <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. Yeah, we used to say good morning, how you doing? Yeah, how you, how's it going and all of that. You know, that, that doesn't go there. <laughs> to begin with, I give glory, honor, and praise to Almighty God the giver of the gifts of my voice and many blessings, the blessing of my parents who laid a music foundation for me by singing lovely music in my home. My parents passed on to me and my siblings, Lenora and Charlena, a strong work ethic needed to pursue and persevere in training and using this gift. Strong religious example integrity and a sense of humor is necessary also. Well, that's all. C'est <laughs> fini. So I am so honored to be here with the great diva, Laverne Monette. I'm especially honored because it is people like you that have paved the way for people like me to be able to have careers. People don't often think of opera as a beacon of civil rights, but every time someone breaks the color line, and stands and performs in their excellence, they make a statement about a whole group of people that make, make the way possible for the rest of us. So I want to start off with this whole idea that you were the first person of color to sing with New Orleans Opera. And not only did you sing, but you sang in a row of Mercedes in Carmen. 1967, if I'm not mistaken. I know, and I know that uh, Ruth Falcon, who we just oh, recently lost, Ruth. was a, was a oh. fresquita with you. Yeah, and, I was uh, so sorry to hear about her passing. And uh, uh, wanted to just talk about that, uh, that experience as much as you remember of it. It was wonderful. And we had the famous basso, Norman Trevor, as a toreador. And uh, we were just having fun and, you know, just enjoying the opera and suddenly I was close to him and he had buttons on his sleeve and my hair got caught so we were connected here <laughs> and, we, and we couldn't get unconnected so we had to wait until we went off stage and unconnect <laughs> but he was a wonderful man and I, I forgot to mention that um, when I sang uh, La Noce di Figaro at Xavier Norman Trago staged it, and Debbie Brown was in it as well. Well, that's a great thing. So you made your debut with New Orleans Opera and finished at Xavier, and then you went to Indiana University. I went to Duquesne University first. And uh, I went to the summer uh, classes. And uh, I, I said I was going to audition, but they said we, we, we don't have, we can't hear any auditions. But Robert Lawrence, the famous musicologist, he said, I would like to hear her. He wanted to, for me to go with him to the home of Villa Pace, the home of Rosa Poncel, to audition. And Rosa Poncel, as you know, was the, the pro protege of Enrico Caruso. So it was wonderful. She had uh, a beautiful home, a swimming pool, 20 dogs. And <laughs> And, and some of them slept in the bed with her. Oh my goodness. So, you know, but it, it was wonderful. I, I did all my coaching. Uh, I sang uh, La Boheme there. And, uh, and I sang with the, the symphony. I sang uh, the incidental music to Egmont by Beethoven. And that was with Peter, I can't remember his last, he's a famous conductor. But uh, I coached with Rosa Poncel, and, and uh, it was a wonderful experience, you know. We decided then that I would audition for the Met. Mr. Lawrence, Mr. Lawrence, uh, I asked him what he thought I should sing, and he told me the Metropolitan Auditions um, in New York, you know, and we had all of it. And it was a wonderful experience there, too. The rookies and the, and the, the stars, we had a concert together. I had Richard Tucker, Robert Merrill, Roberta Peters, all of the all of the names. You know. But the one that really threw me was Franco Corelli. I mean, he looks like a god. <laughs> yeah. oh. I mean, I, I was speechless. I couldn't yeah. speak. And yeah. when I met uh, um, the heavy set guy, he just uh, 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 Pavarotti. Luciano Pavarotti. He said, "What kind of a name is this, La Vermonette?" 
I cannot say it. Is it can I call you Monet? I said, please, <laughs> feel free, <laughs> feel free. I did the Central Park concerts with Richard Frankel Goldman, and these were lighter things like, so, so, breeze, whisper, that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. I had a wonderful experience to do the Zauber Flirte with Julius Riddell conducting and another black singer, uh, uh, Veronica Tiley. Have you heard of her? Oh, she has the most exquisite voice in the world. And, uh, you know, we, we, we were very good friends. We did the 12 churches on Good Friday and absolutely astounded by the quality of her voice. When she sings, Oh, it was glorious, glorious. And uh, so anyway, we were good friends. And so she asked me, she was uh, managed by Saul Hurok in uh, Colombia. And she said, would you take a trip to Finland for me? Because I can't go. <laughs> and so I said, yes, I'd be happy to. So this wonderful experience of the Met and City Opera and uh, your tour of Finland. Uh, when I grew up, I always had people tell me, well, why do you like that? Why do you like opera? We don't do that. And we don't, you know, and you're weird. And, and luckily I was okay with being weird. But as an adult, the more I researched, I went back and found Elizabeth Taylor Greenfield, who was a slave, who was the first documented to do a classical concert, Ciceretta Jones. And then of course later we have Marian Anderson. Did you know Gloria Davis? Yes, I remember Gloria Davis, yeah. So there were many people who paved the way. And, and Shirley Verrett. I Shirley sang with Verrett. Shirley Verrett too. Yeah, Shirley Verrett was born here. And she made the medal audition the year after you she won. Yeah, she. Yeah. I, I was in a carmen with her. And I saw her, Samson and Delilah. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So Beautiful you've had all of these wonderful and great experiences. Oh. Are there any, any particular highlights that that we might have missed that you might want to talk about? I, I want to let you know that we had no, 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 no funds for all of this. All of it was, was lanyard and blessings to the nth degree. It was just wonderful, you know. And, uh, Sybil Kine has been a great historian of Creole New Orleans, and uh, you have had a wonderful CD with her Creole Classique, which was, I think was the first time I heard the um, Snyre. She said most of them hadn't been recorded before, right, right, right. but she, she said that um, I, you can't leave this earth without your voice being yeah, <laughs> recorded, you know, so my sister and I sang, uh, you know, the, the, the yeah, my daughter and I sang that one. Oh, you do? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Now, you've had all these wonderful things. But you have survived 10 cancers and still sitting here as, as gorgeous as possible. What, what is your secret? I'm sure I know part of the answer. What's your secret to surviving 10 cancers? Well, I, uh, it's the Lord. Whatever, whatever is, is, I mean, I don't take any credit. I, he gave me the voice and I just use it. And uh, he, he sees me through everything, all of these, you know. Because the people at the hospital say, you must be an awfully positive person because uh, you, um, you, I mean, we can't get over that you survived all these cancers, you know. Yeah. I guess my last question, unless there's something else that comes up, is with all that you have accomplished, all that you've survived, with all of your faith, what would you say to young singers? Oh, I would say that if you, if you want, you can't, it's not, people come to me and study a voice for six weeks and they say, when am I going to sing like you? I say, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> six weeks, are you kidding? I said, you have to be uh, uh, dedicated you can't it, it can't happen in a day you take advantage of every um audition that is around you know that and you never know what's going to come from that you know and constantly study languages 
roles and coaching. Uh, I had wonderful coaches. The Metropolitan gave me four wonderful coaches. Oh, well, I, I thank you for this privilege and this blessing and this honor. I, I, I'm speechless. I am speechless. Was that a bird? Yeah, it was a bird. And being <laughs> well <laughs> Wow, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I thought it was going to go in my mouth. 